Good evening. Welcome to Cut Deep, the Road to Decision 2023 edition. We want to apologize once more for our hiccups last night, and we're here tonight. Happy to have Mrs. Lorna Smith with us, and we're going to take two on this interview. Uh, from tonight straight into Thursday, April 20th, we will be interviewing candidates for the 2023 upcoming general elections. We have some exciting interviews coming up. Um, look out for our ads so that if you have questions for the candidates, you may send us a text message or WhatsApp or feel free to call us with any questions for the candidates on 284-440-3234. Cut Deep is a part of the Guava Berry Media platform and is a multi-platform show covering social issues and political issues in the BVI. Its viewership continues to grow with up to 6,000 viewers weekly. It cuts across demographics and captures an international audience. I want to express my gratitude to those of you that continue to support Cut Deep through private donations, words of encouragement, comments, leads, and social concerns. Thank you to our viewing audience and supporters for watching and sharing our content. content. Uh, if you wish to support the platform financially, feel free to contact us again once more on 284-440-3234. Our guest tonight is the lovely former First Lady, Mrs. Lorna Smith. I can't think of a more powerful way or guest to start off these conversations. I am delighted to have her. Lorna is no stranger to the uh, Cut Deep platform. She is one of our most seasoned former civil servants and financial services expert. She is also the wife of former Premier Dr. D. Orlando Smith. Madam Lorna Smith, I want to start out this interview by just um, making a short statement. I'm going to just make a short st statement quickly. There were persons that are somehow confused about our relationship, and I think that is due to the fact that we spar on certain issues. Um, what people seem to be unable to grasp, however, is that it is okay to do that and still remain warm, friendly, and cordial. You and I have always shared a great relationship, and I don't know that you feel comfortable, but I'm going to share anyway with the listening audience that when I was unfairly dismissed from the BVI Tourist Board, you were the first person to reach out <clears throat> in any real way. Um, in a meaningful way to have coffee and make sure that I had a plan to maintain myself and my children, and you were real and serious about that. You support every single project, initiative, or event that I put together, whether by attending or, you know, financing for others to attend. Um, you continue to so support me in any way you possibly can, and I thank you and remain grateful, forever grateful for that support. Now, both you and I know <laughs> that that will not impact the conversation tonight, but I wanted to just express that to you and express my gratefulness um, <clears throat> as woman to woman as well, um, you know, for you being there for me when I absolutely needed it. And so we're going to get down to the action for tonight. Everybody's lined up and they are ready. Welcome to the platform once more. And I'm just going to give you a moment to introduce yourself. Just tell us who Lorna is. Thank you, Cindy, and thank you for having me. You're most welcome. And you're very welcome for expressing, you know, the support that I have given to you. You and I both share a deep love for democ democracy. And there should not be any confusion. We will not always agree, but I have always admired your courage. Thank you. Your forthrightness and your quest for accountability every time. That is very admirable in you. Thank you. <clears throat> and in terms of myself, again, thanks for having me. When I was announcing, Cindy, that I was running for political office, in fact, on my way to the television station, I was listening to the Honorable Julian Fraser. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you heard that interview. It was for Black History Month. And he said that when he... He 
He was in Sikos Bay. I was in Anguilla. But I started school without shoes. I came from, well, let's call it what it was. I, I, mm -hmm. I, was, I was a poor, poor person. We talk about it in, in terms of humble beginnings. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was able to follow my mother to, to BVI at a, a very young age, at, at about seven. And I'm very grateful for what my mother was able to, to do for us. She worked uh, three, sometimes four jobs, including ironing, ironing at two and three in the morning for people. Uh, she worked at the time for Mr. Roland Hodge and, and so on. And many a days, Cindy, we existed on rice and Vienna sausage. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's where I come from. That's, that's who I am. I'm very grateful for persons like Raphaelia Smith. She's the, the mother. She was the mother of, of Wade and uh, Beverly and, and so on. Who would comb my hair? Who would actually give me things, give us? Mm -hmm. uh, at the time, there were seven of us who would give us clothes to, you know, hand-me-downs mm -hmm. to wear and so on. And at school, the, for us, my mother always instilled in us the importance of education. She herself had only gone to the third standard, but she saw education as the way out for us. And that was the, the if, you, if you want to call it, that's what got us to wear where we are now. I'm grateful always, I will always be grateful to people like uh, Dorothy Turnbull, uh, Risa Todman, Reimer and so on, who taught us not just how to, how to, 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 to do the best we could in terms of the formal subjects at school, mm -hmm. but they were the ones who taught us how to stand upright, mm -hmm. how to walk properly. Mm -hmm. The boy must be on the outside every time, and the girl must be on the inside. And you know, essentially how to, to conduct yourself. So that's, that's my upbringing. And I, I thought it necessary to say that and to point that out, because a lot of people don't know that I came from those beginnings. And as I said before, I'm so grateful that I was able to get the kind of education that, that yeah. I, I, I got. Um, I came up and Mr. Stout, uh, Mr. The, uh, the late Honorable H.L. Stout, he selected about six of us, not about, there were six of us who went to University of the West Indies. Okay. And we came back and all of us, in fact, at the funeral on Saturday of um, the, 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 the funeral on Saturday of Mr. Egbert Forbes, uh, Mrs. Carmen Percival Howell, she is the principal of the Charlotte O'Malley High School. Okay. She was the one who gave the eulogy. So all of us are here, Dancia Penn, uh, Pat Beamish Johnson, uh, Mr. Elroy Turnbull, all of us, we came back and we made our contribution. So that's who I was and who I am. And that's, that was my foundation. That's your foundation. That's my foundation. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've built on it. I, I have worked hard for the British Virgin Islands. All my life, I have worked for the British Virgin Islands in various capacities. Uh, from 1973, I've studied I did my bachelor's degree. I've studied international relations. And in fact, I was the person who advised the governments in terms of increasing our footprint, if you want to call mm -hmm. it that, mm -hmm. beyond the British Virgin mm -hmm. Islands to get into the, the rest of the Caribbean, the OECS, the CARICOM, the, the ECLAC, and, and all these organizations. And uh, of course, you know my relationship uh, with the then um, Mr. Stout as his permanent secretary. 
uh, we share the same vision for a college. college. Mm -hmm. And Cindy, when that college opened, we shared the vision, we made sure it was built. I mean, I, 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 when, I, when I think of, of, of me in the middle between the architect and the, the contractor, keeping them apart because they didn't always see, <laughs> see eye to eye. But at the end of the day, if you saw the joy on Mr. Stout's face, as he welcomed people from all over the BVI. I can picture it. Oh, to the college. I mean, <laughs> he was just, he was like a child. You know, beaming with pride. Beaming with such great pride. And, um, and the college, of course, that bears his name. But it's not just about education in terms of, of what, what, what I do and what I did with him. I've worked with most of our leaders, I've worked with um, the Honorable Cyril Romney, I've mm -hmm. worked with Mr. Maduro, Mr. Labour, mm -hmm. Mr. Labour himself. <laughs> I've worked with Mr. Omar Hodge. Mm -hmm. I've worked with my husband in financial services. So I've worked with them all and I, I do have that experience. And of course, beyond that, it's the international side of it. I opened the London office the Hong Kong office, and it's not just opening them. These mm -hmm. were the, the basis for our growth in, in, in mm -hmm. financial services especially. So that's who I am. Yeah, and, and your community efforts, if my you wanted community. to touch oh, on that quickly. Absolutely, I'd, I'd love to. I have been a member of the Rotary Club of, of Tortola for, for something like 22, 23 years. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I, I rose to past assistant, assistant governor, you'd, you'd, you'd call it. But um, it's, it, I, I, I resigned after a, a year because it was a lot to take on. Okay. And, um, and I've been a president, of course. And this very Saturday, we have a huge fundraiser. So I'm taking a break from campaigning to do the to fundraiser. Do this fundraiser. Which so it's is? not which is 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 it's it's in 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 it's an aid of of cancer treatment mm -hmm. and a youth empowerment program for Road Town. You know there's one in East End. There's yeah. going to be one on Virgin Gorda. We mm -hmm. want to build one in, in Road Town. And then I've been on the board of the youth empowerment program mm -hmm. for for many years. In fact, I think it's in its 17th year, so yeah. maybe 15 years. Um, and of course, I've been on the board of the same HLSCC. Mm -hmm. And I've worked also, so th these are my community efforts. In terms of, 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 of young people, I believe in, in mentoring them and supporting them. I, I worked with a group called Young Professionals, and um, so I, it's, it's what I like. I, mm -hmm. I like. I like the community, I like working in the community, I like doing things in the community. So that's who I am and that's who I continue to be. Thank you so much, and that's who I know you to be. So let's get down to the gist of the matter. <clears throat> so let's talk about your run. Um, you initially came out as an independent candidate. Uh, I was one of those that was hoping that you'd stay independent. Um, and every chance I get, I would be, are you going to stay independent? And I would message your niece, tell Lorna I said to stay independent. Yes, I got the message. And then, um, you know, I think you had a, you still do have a really good campaign going on. It's still picking up momentum, even as you've announced that you've now joined the NDP slate and you guys had your launch on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So talk to us about, or tell us what made you go from independent to um, on the NDP slate, if that was always the plan or, you know, yes. Cindy, one thing I am is, is honest and forthright. I would not bamboozle anybody okay. or fool anybody. When I decided to, to run for political office, I did start out as an independent mm -hmm. and for a number of reasons. I wanted to, to get the views of the people of the BVI without a badge, without a party, 
-hmm. I wanted people to be able to speak frankly to me. And I did get that from them. And I, they continue, and I hope that they will, and I know they will continue to speak to me very freely. Mm -hmm. And I got, I got, I, I, was, I was very encouraged, encouraged by that. Mm -hmm. And like you, they also encouraged me to stay independent. But last week, Wednesday, I made an announcement that I would be joining the National Democratic Party. And there were a, a couple of reasons for it. One is that my views are very closely aligned with those of the National Democratic Party. And they've been, but you know, of course, we, mm -hmm. we would have had our differences. But they have, in terms of parties, the National Democratic Party is the one that my views are most closely aligned with. I think that the National Democratic Party has accomplished a lot mm -hmm. over their 20 years. Uh, nobody has been perfect. Mistakes have been made. Mm -hmm. But who doesn't make mistakes? Uh, they've, you know, we can talk about their accomplishments later on. Mm -hmm. but. There are so many. There is the hospital, there's the National Health Insurance Scheme, there is Sister Island's health care, and just so many things, even free tuition at the college. Just so many things that they, they, they accomplished. So I thought I, can't, I couldn't do this on my own in terms of, of, of running as an independent. I needed to be with a team. And for me, the best team uh, was the na and is the National Democratic Party. But let me be clear, I have always been an independent thinker. And I will continue to be an independent thinker. And going forward, I will, you know, continue. I will, I'm, I'm a member of the National Democratic Party, but I, I expect to maintain my own voice, my own thinking as, as we go forward. Were you approached by any of the other parties or did you approach any of the other parties to, or was it just the NDP for you? No, it was not the NDP for me at all. I, I thought... You looked at other options. To be so honest, you to be honest if we had more time, Cindy, I may have gone on my own with a, a group. But time was, you know, you've seen time what... Time was none yes, I, 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 As I was, it's like being in a pressure cooker. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have a lot of, a lot of time to think about those things. Mm -hmm. So, um, the, as I said, the National Democratic Party is the... More closely aligned to... Yes. Okay. So, some say that um, behind every great man... Is an even greater woman. I, I want to be careful because there are quite, <laughs> quite a few of my male friends that have decided to label me um, a feminist. Um, so I have to be very careful with my words and actions, but they'll be just fine. Um, and you have been asked this question so many times, but the perception just doesn't seem to go away. And I think that it is because we see you um, to be, I know you to be, a powerful, respected entity. Can you actually distance yourself from your husband's political career, which includes his policies and decisions? And do you stand by his leadership? Do I stand by his leadership? Yeah. He's is not there like anymore, no? But... He's not by his leadership. His past ah, leadership. His past leadership. If, okay. You know, if there is anything that you will okay. say that you know what I would not have done that this way, but yeah any major thing? As I listened to the beginning of your question uh, about my husband, uh, I, said, I thought to myself, because I was wondering where you were going with it, I thought to myself, Cindy is such an advocate for women. Two weeks ago, you held this event about women mm -hmm. and empowerment of women and so on. There were, there were two men. Yes. And <laughs> what about nearly over 100 women? Yeah. Uh, it was really, and, and close to 100 women, whatever it was. But it was an amazing, an amazing event. 
Uh, so, so in terms of, of myself as a woman, me as a woman, I am running on my, my record, my record of accomplishments, my, uh, my record of, of experience, and my record of, of, of strength. In terms of my husband's own leadership, I think he was one of the greatest leaders. As I said, for I think it's about roughly what, 20 years? Mm -hmm. And not, not consistently, but they accomplished- 12 years as premier. 12 years mm -hmm. as, as premier. And uh, so it's, it's uh, so it's three terms, eight it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's less than 20. But they were in the, the opposition for the other eight years. Eight years. Mm -hmm. So they, they were still, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. still very effective mm -hmm. as opposition. So uh, 12 years in, in that leadership role, I think he, he did very, very well. I listed some of the areas that under his leadership, the BVI really moved, moved forward. And he, as a person, is completely different to me in terms of our approaches, in terms of, as I said, even our, our beliefs in some ways but I think he was very effective. As I said before, nobody is perfect, but I think he did an excellent job as the premier of the country for 12 years and as leader of the opposition then for another eight years. I think he did very well. I'm very proud of him. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think maybe we can put that question to bed. Yes, please do. No, Lorna <laughs> did not run the country for 20 years. <laughs> she is standing on her own merit and she is allowing her husband to stand on his merit. And, and Cindy, we need to be clear in terms of a permanent secretary. A permanent secretary, and I'm moving now beyond my husband. Mm -hmm. Uh, a permanent secretary is the chief advisor. Mm -hmm. And you were a permanent secretary to, under? Under, under Mr. O'Neill, Mr. Mr. yes. Mm -hmm. I forgot to mention him. Mr. O'Neill, Mr. Stout, uh, Mr. Romney, and so okay. on. So you're the mm -hmm. chief advisor. Mm -hmm. I was not his permanent secretary. Okay. But I, I did give advice in, in financial services. But in terms of running the country, no, absolutely not. Are there any of his initiatives that you intend to um, pick up and complete or see to fruition? Um, or, or are you going to be on an absolutely clean slate? Um, if you understand what I'm asking you. I do. Yeah. I do, absolutely. Is there any and unfinished business that you think yes, the territory can benefit absolutely from? Absolutely. So many. Uh, let's look at the sister islands. Um, the Nurse Iris O'Neill Clinic. Mm -hmm. was started under the, the National Democratic Party right. government. And it was, it was opened by this current administration. Uh, but aside from moving the same, you know, facilities, limited facilities over to the clinic, I, I think that it operates largely as a, a shell. Mm -hmm. There is so much more that can be done. And I talked at, at the beginning about, you know, having conversations with people about what needs to be done. And one woman from Virgin Gordas, uh, for instance, said to me, why can't, why can't we have our children born yeah. on Virgin Gorda at the Nurse Iris O'Neill Clinic? Uh, Tortola is, is 30 minutes away from Virgin Gorda. Why can't we have more specialist services? And of course, you know, she just threw up her hands in despair about emergencies because you have to get on a boat, rocking wherever it is, and find yourself here to the Dr. Dio Smith Hospital. And it's, it's not right. I would like to see, I, I, I think it's very important that we properly staff and provide the amenities for the nurse Iris O'Neill Clinic on Virgin Gorda and provide similar facilities on Anagada. Another thing that still staying with the Sister Islands that is of concern to them, of course, is, is banking. It's of mm -hmm. concern to us in Tortola too. 
Uh, but, you know, banking, the thank, Banco Popular is there, thankfully. They're there three days a week, I believe. Uh, and I'm told the lines are out the door and ringing what is, round what is and it, round. What is it that we can actually do? And we just going to go out yes. for a minute. What is it that we can actually do to create a better service with the banking on Tatola and, and in and, Virgin Gorda? Because, I mean, we Gorda. seem to talk about these things over and over, and it's a conversation, and it's a meeting, and it's a... But what is it that we can actually do to move the needle on improvement right. in these services? I would say we have to move on two, two fronts. The Financial Services Commission is the entity or the agency mm -hmm. that's directly responsible for banking. Mm -hmm. But the Minister of Finance, the government has a responsibility to engage more with the banks in terms of even well, customer service for one, the, 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 the kinds of offerings that they have. Um, we need to, to sit across from these, these, these country managers. And if we need to bring in the more senior people from wherever they're coming from, whether it's Puerto Rico or Barbados or US mm -hmm. Virgin Islands, we bring them in and we make certain demands. You look, you look at, for example, Bank of Republic Bank, and I'm, I know it's doing an excellent job here. But I remember Scotia, when Scotia, remember when Scotia mm -hmm. was here. The Jamaica government said to Scotia, you stay right here in Jamaica. I don't know whether it's changed now, but years ago. So the government has a right to make certain demands. The banks are, banks are making money. So is, it, so is it then that, are we timid in negotiating with these institutions? We... Because are we afraid to, you know, upset them? To rock the boat yeah. or anything? Yeah. Uh, I think it's a combination of, uh, I wouldn't use the word timidness. I would you prefer to say there, there must be more uh, confidence, more maturity, more uh, negotiating skills mm -hmm. on our part to really demand better service for our people from, from the banks, for be example, it from Virgin Gorda or Tortola. Um, so I guess maybe a lot of this will be um, legislating or policy making. Um, I'd say it, it, being in financial services for so long, can you think of one um, policy or regulation for the banks that would improve their service like immediately? Like one that you could come up with or is there one on the banks that's there's probably the banks lacked? And, there's the Banks and, and, and the Trust uh, Companies Act. I mean, that is in existence. But I am not looking at legislation. I'm looking at, at, at policies and getting the banks to be more engaged and more receptive to the, to the, to, to, to the BVA, even in terms of, of, of we talk a lot about public-private partnerships. Mm -hmm. You know, we, try, we, we, we should encourage the banks to, to do more in terms of those, that private partnership mm -hmm. with the government. Mm -hmm. Having said that, the government has to do its own part. Of course. To, you know, mm -hmm. to give the banks confidence, yeah. to, to loan money mm -hmm. to the private sector and to, to businesses. I mean, businesses, you know, Cindy, that, that in terms of getting loans, that, that can be getting a, a business loan. Uh, yes, you do need to have a, a, you know, a proper business plan and, and so on right. for the bank to really to even look at you. Right. But banks, you know, it's, it's, it's easier to buy a car than to get a business loan. So I think there is need for greater engagement between the government I agree. and, and, I definitely and the agree. banks. I definitely on, agree. On, on that front. <clears throat> when, I, um, when I moved back home, I'm home now like 10 years, and when I moved back home, 
I think the banks were still doing, um, I guess, a deposit for cars. Um, but I was coming from Cayman because I lived there for a bit. Mm. And they were on doing 100% land loans. And I kept inquiring, like, why couldn't that be, you know, the same here? But I, I realized that companies, et al, I'll say et al, I think they feel comfortable to do, you know, maybe as they please, um, maybe offer as mediocre as possible. Because um, I kind of feel like there's no, like you say, maybe enough engagement from the that's government. The, that's the point for me. Um, yeah. The private public partnership just isn't there. And so we don't get, you know, the best that we could get out of the institutions that are here to serve us. But that's a whole other big conversation. That's another big conversation. For <laughs> um, another but that's kind of how I feel about that. The we don't get the best engagement. Of, we yes. don't. We don't. Mm -hmm. We really don't. Yeah. One of the biggest neglects, I think, in the territory, in this territory, um, are all social issues. And I sum that up to, oh Lord, I shouldn't say this, but I sum that up to our male leadership in their priorities. I think men love to build things. Women are more caring and nurturing and would look at certain issues when, you know, that would not be, it's just not in a man's nature to take a look at that. Um, I know that sounds biased, but that's my view. <laughs> um, I think we're falling apart as at the seams when it, as it relates to um, social issues. What social issues are near and dear to your heart? And what are the plans to address those and look at others such as the inclusion of a specially able person across the board in the protection and inclusion of our senior citizens? I'm glad you asked me that. Uh, social issues mm -hmm. are very critical. And I am not sure that it's the men's fault. Mm. Uh, certainly, they need more attention. An area that I think is very critical is mental health. Mm -hmm. And we should not just be looking at mental health in terms of old people, people we see on mm -hmm. the streets, and so on. In fact, I attended a, a session with some young people uh, about a month ago. And their concern was the, the limited access to mental health for them. Yes, the people in mental health are doing their best, mm -hmm. uh, but there is need for more resources. You may have, for instance, you may have a, a psychiatrist you know, um, you may have a, 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 another physician who's a mental health specialist. You might have a couple of psychiatrists. Lower down, you might need therapists. You might need people to, to support this. And this was, in fact, this was identified by a young person, the, the need for greater mental health care. I remember there used to be, I don't think it's active anymore, under uh, Mrs. Rita Fred George's, and I recall that you did honor her, mm -hmm. uh, was it last year or the year before? Mm -hmm. But under her, her, her leadership, there was an active mental health association. We had persons like Dr. Michael O'Neill and other persons who really supported this association. It was active for many years. So mental health needs to be really taken in hand and we need to pay attention to, to those, those, um, that, that particular area. Another area you mentioned, um, children with special needs or people with special mm -hmm. needs. This is an area that's very dear to me. It touches me in a very special way. And I have contributed to, for instance, the Autism Center that has been established. I've made sure that the Rotary Club of Tortola has contributed funds to that center. We have also contributed funds to, to training teachers I wanna, in, I in want, that area. I want so. to, because what I want to do with this platform, the Cut Deep platform and interviews, is that I want people to understand intimately who the candidate is. Because, you know, quite often we can say things, but then 
mm. people may think, oh, she's only saying that. But so what I want you to do is say to people why special ed is so important to you so that they could understand that it is something that affects you and as that I you said, will be fighting As I said, it. it touches me in a very personal way. Yeah. Very personally. Uh, I don't know that that is the only reason why mm -hmm. I feel that way. Mm -hmm. I do feel very strongly in the whole concept of inclusion yeah. for these men and women with special needs. In fact, I liked the fact that one former minister referred to them as differently abled persons. Right. Because that's how they are. Yes. And they, I think that's we, the term now. Yeah, yeah if, we, if, we, if, we had the, if we have the patience to really try to understand them. Yeah. You know, we will get the best that we can from them. And so it is an area that, that I am very, very, very committed, committed to seeing improving. Uh, it, it, I, I, I mentioned some of the things that we did as a club. Mm -hmm. And this was with my urging. Right. We also did things like buy a vehicle to make sure that teachers could be transported around and, and, and so on. So these, these are social issues. I also, I don't know if you would call this a social issue, but I do think, Cindy, and one area that, one area of my platform, I don't know if we can find time to come to it. One area of my platform is the cost of living in the British Virgin Islands. And I realize that we can look at it from two, on two fronts. I do think that, for instance, speaking of social issues, I think we need to make sure that a number of those people that we see, you know, on the street and so on, that they, they get at least one hot meal. Mm -hmm. So we could, we should set up I'm committed yeah. to setting up something <laughs> like a, a soup kitchen. Mm -hmm. You look at, you look at, and this isn't just talking. You look at Rotong Wholesale, One Mart, Bobby's. They all provide, they sell food, you know. I'm sure at the end of the day there is lots of leftovers. Mm -hmm. They could contribute to, to this, this initiative. We could, within our community, we could raise funds for this. I know there's the, the, the family support network, and I know that um, Mrs. Judith Charles does mm -hmm. an excellent she job. She does an excellent them. job. She mm -hmm. does a very good job. But beyond that, I want to see our people getting a good, hot meal. And it gets them off the street. It makes the country look better. We ourselves feel better. Because we have contributed, and we need to pay attention to it. It's I a agree. priority for me. Um, do you think that some of the reasons uh, initiatives like that don't work in the BVA, is it a pride thing? Because, you know, across the world, even, you know, the Caribbean or closer um, brothers and sisters, you have meals on wheels and these types of initiatives that, and like you say, soup kitchens, that are very effective mm -hmm. and it's not just mm -hmm. for the people on the street because there are families that need a hot meal to go to the to bed um, for the children etc but there's such pride involved do you think that is part of what's hampering or is there maybe a belief that families here don't need that because I recall one of the politicians saying that, oh, the BVI doesn't have any poor people. Oh. They just don't oh. manage oh. their money, right? That's Which we know to be absolutely incorrect. So, I mean, if we can figure out how we to start to break the stigma on that, maybe we can get those initiatives it, moving. It, it, it really, I don't see it necessarily as a stigma. I mean, poverty is, everybody can become that. Uh, but people in the BVI are very proud, mm -hmm. and they will not admit that they're having these difficulties until you, if you want to say it, sometimes you, you just come upon it, yeah. and you, you realize it. And um, we, we need to get people to, to understand that there is nothing wrong with, with, 
getting a hot meal. There's Absolutely. absolutely mm -hmm. nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. But let us provide. But at the same time, let's get our population back to work as far as we can, as, as, as much and as fast as we can. And this is another area, another of my platforms, the, the whole revitalizing. Let's talk about it. Yes. We, we, I have more questions here. Yes. Let's, so let's, let me, let's talk go, about go your, the, I know the, you want to talk about that. I Let, how are you going to get people back to work? How am I going to get Give me people. some of your initiatives. Like, give me a working plan because we can always okay. say, let's get people back to work. But how are we going to do that? People are working. Uh, uh, you know, we have a, you know, we have a, a, a fairly, we have a relatively large unemployment um, level if you want to put it, but there are a lot of people that need to get back, mm -hmm. that need to get back to work. We need to revitalize the economy by, for instance, making it easier for persons to, to, to get trade licenses, to get into their, to, to, to get their businesses going, small and medium sized businesses, because they in turn hire people. I agree. You know, mm -hmm. so we need to do that. And we need to, when I say, I think I mentioned the, the fact that there is a lot of red tape, or maybe I didn't. Mm -hmm. Well, let me, let, let, is... me, let, me, let me say this way. So when we talk about getting our people back to work, so we're going to have a really right conversation. Um, you get a lot of conversation about our people not being ready to work, how are you going to fix that? When I look around me, I barely see Virgin Islanders in, in, in anywhere um, in the workplace, certain spaces. Um, we see our culture and who we are as a people transforming into something different, um, something that we probably don't identify with, right? And cultures shift and change and they look based on um, you know, importation of labor, et cetera. So when you talk about getting our people back to work, because there are a lot of people coming in here every day and they're finding work. So how do we push back and get our people into work? I had a conversation the other day um, and it was me and it was two of uh, my white friends that have been here for years. And um, one person, you know both of them, I was talking about when financial services had begun and Virgin Islanders dominated the industry. Is that correct? You went to the offices and everybody was a Virgin Islander, um, probably except for the head. You probably have one or two managers that came in, but it was mostly Virgin Islanders. That has totally changed and shifted. So if you, we can talk about that and how we get our people actually back into the workforce. I, I have to tell you, uh, Cindy, that the, the statistics tell me something different. Mm -hmm. In fact, in 2017, we did a, a, a study on, on the value mm -hmm. of the British Virgin Islands to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the areas that we looked at. And there is the perception that there are very few Virgin Islanders uh, involved or working in the industry. Mm -hmm. That study told me something completely, told us something completely different. In fact, uh, two thirds, three quarters of the, the, the persons working in the industry mm -hmm. are, are Virgin Islanders or have been living here for most of their lives. Now, it is true that at the top, we do not have enough, nearly enough people of the Virgin Islands working there. But it is something that we are working to correct. We have the Robert Mathavius Institute, what used to be the Financial Services Institute at the H. Laverty Stout Community College, mm -hmm. that does the, the kind of training that is, 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 is needed to get people at the, the top of the um, top levels in, in employment. And um, it, it works very well. I find that the, the industry is very supportive. In fact, uh, when Robert Mathavius retired, uh, we raised well over $100,000 from the industry mm -hmm. just for, for that institute to, 
to get to get going. And this does not include the contributions that they make by, you know, their st training their staff and, 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 and contributing in other ways, uh, mentorships and so on. There is more that can be done. In fact, um, we would remember, you remember the, the McKinsey report of, of 2014 also spoke to the need for us to get, uh, first of all, people to, to understand financial services and how, how financial services contribute to the growth of the territory and to be, get more people involved in it. We're working on it. We're not there yet, but we are on our way. I beg to differ. Okay. But that's an, <laughs> but we, because we I see it. Because I see it. I see it in my face every day, and I have questions in here about um, education and primary and secondary mm. and tertiary, and all of that. And I mean, I think we've totally lost and dropped the ball with our young people and understanding. Because when I went to school, I knew what our industries were, right? Um, I knew it was financial services, and I knew what that meant when it was formed, what it meant for the territory. Right. I yeah. knew for tourism and all of that. But our young people don't know. They have no clue. And I think we've lost it. That's awful. I don't we've lost, we've dropped the ball on that in terms of bringing them Cindy, along. I don't think we're I don't, bringing them along. I don't think you should generalize by okay. saying that we've dropped the ball and that our young people, I don't think that they would be very happy to, to hear that that, that that is the perception. We, 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 it's, it's an area that, that, that needs to, to grow, and I accept that, in fact, not just accept, it's an area that we need to get our young people, more young people involved in. And we can do it through mentorships. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, we need to do more of that, the public-private partnerships that I, I talked about, mm -hmm. and through through education that's relevant, and I spoke a little bit about that as well. And the mentorship programs have to be uh, programs that not just the, you know, the, the month, the, the once, a, once a year right. program that comes out of the secondary school, but constant mentorship and, and, and relevant training of our young people. In fact, another area that, that is a priority for me is establishing a youth trust. And this youth trust would be, the objective of this youth trust would be to, to, to give career guidance mm -hmm. to our young people. So that while the, the, the government is looking after, you know, the formal training, if you want to call it that, secondary school, college here and beyond the 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 youth trust would be giving the kind of of guidance uh, empowerment to young people so that they can you know meet their ambitions and so on so this is an area that needs to be to be developed mm -hmm. uh, our young people our young people i don't want to feel like you do that we've it's, it's not a negative thing. It's just that we have to bring them along with we us. We have to. We, I think you guys, your generation brought me along. I don't think that we're bringing the generation be lower. If I pull 10 random children right now, and just random, and I ask them about financial services, I think we'd get one that could tell me what it is, and, and, and it's, again, it's not to insult us or anything. No, no, Let, no. Let's take Lavity Stout no, no, no. holiday, Cindy, for example, Cindy, right? Cindy, just a minute. I, I have to correct you on that. <laughs> and I'm gonna take you out on the road and I'm gonna... I, I have to correct you on that because <laughs> I, again, I'm not going on perception, I'm going on my stats. Mm -hmm. And four out of 10 people those 10 people would know something about financial services. I'm talking services. about our students. I'm not, I'm talking about, right. okay. I'm talking young about, people. We, we, we need to do more and we need mm -hmm. to start mm -hmm. at, an, at an earlier age with, you know, really immersing yeah. people and getting them, getting our young people.
to understand the financial services. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's not as, mm -hmm. as, as, it's not as, let me not make any apology for it. I think we can do better. Right, that's all I'm but, saying. That's but all I'm we saying. are yeah. on yeah. our way with the programs that I'm talking about and the programs that, that certainly I want to, to, mm -hmm. to, to introduce mm -hmm. to our young people. I talked about the Youth Trust. I talked about, you know, continuing to, to do the mentorship programs, uh, working to strengthen the Robert Mathavius Institute, which, which works. You know, yeah. very, the youth very trust, well. whether you're elected or not, is that an initiative that you want to see come to fruition? In whether I'm elected or not, it needs it. Okay. Uh, people ask me what's the difference between that and the youth empowerment program. Mm -hmm. They are quite different. The youth empowerment program uh, really is geared towards young people between the ages of, of, of let's say, 10 and, and 15, 10 and 16. I'm looking at, at people who are, who are older, young people who are, are older, let's mm -hmm. say between so 18, 18 and, and, and 21. 20. Yes, so mm -hmm. uh, it's, 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 it's a priority uh, and our young people. The other, thing, the other thing, Cindy, is that our young people are born entrepreneurs. I agree with they you. They all want to have their own businesses. I agree. With you know, you. they will it's in their spend. Bloodline. It's in their blood. <laughs> it's in their DNA. They, 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 they don't necessarily want to, to work for somebody. They want to work for themselves, mm -hmm. and so we have to, to empower them. There are so many areas. You look, for instance, at our. Let's get on to tourism now. Okay. Okay. Don't get on to tourism yet. Only because. No. Let me just finish my. I sentence. have a big so, question. In. Okay. Go oh, ahead. Wait, I, have I a, don't know yeah. whether this. Well, I don't know what that question <laughs> is. But I want to talk about our product. Yes, I have it in here. Oh, that's I have what it, you're going I have to it ask in me. here for you. Well, I want to say though, that that is an area when you look at our tourism. You look at our tourism. And. The fact that there are just there, there is just so much. There is very little. Let me put it very <laughs> bluntly. There is very little, very little for them to do. That is a fact. Yeah. Our tourists come. Look, I'm looking down at the cruise ships when they're here. Uh, residents, I see people walking. Aside from tours, you know the taxi mm -hmm. and tour operators. What else is there for them to do? Very little. Our young people, we should give our young people opportunities in that area. Again, we go back to the banks giving support, but the government needs to have a plan in terms of product development so that our young people can become involved. But our young people do want to be. No, they, they want to be involved. Too. They want to be involved. Um, I mean, I think we wanted to be involved too, but we had to be um, brought along and be trained and given the right tools and so forth. Um, so yeah, that was just basically where yeah, I was going with that. Yeah. And we, but you've worked in tourism yourself. Yeah, I've for, worked for, in tourism. I've worked in many, financial many, services many years, for 10 years as in, well. And in financial <laughs> services. Um, but yes, tourism so. is one that sticks out for me because mm -hmm. I don't like people to just see me as a one trick pony. Yeah. pony. I, 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 I'm not just about financial services. Tourism mm -hmm. is, is, is equally important. And I would like to see our product uh, diversify or develop yes and we're gonna get that to area. it okay. i have some All big right. questions on that we're gonna take a five minute break and we will come right back with our last few questions i think this might be the heavy hitter part of the show um so we'll take a five minute break and we'll be right back infrastructure must be our legacy to our young people as Sonia said earlier, our youth are not only our next, they are our now generation. Yes, we cannot, so we cannot fail them. Education is critical to their development, including mentorship and career guidance. They need 
access to finance to meet their entrepreneurial ambitions. Most importantly, we must empower them to become the men and women who will take this country forward. A clean BPI with a solid infrastructure must be our legacy to our young people. a solid infrastructure must be our legacy to our young people. As Sonia said earlier, our youth are not only our next, they are our now generation. Yes, we cannot, so we cannot fail them. Education is critical to their development including mentorship and career guidance. They need access to finance to meet their entrepreneurial ambitions. Most importantly, we must empower them to become the men and women who will take this country forward. Welcome back, it's Cut Deep, Decision 2023 edition. We're interviewing the candidates on the road to election. Sitting in with us tonight is Mrs. Lorna Smith. We're getting into, my interviews are kind of off the beaten path. So the questions are gonna be different. Um, we wanna be really interactive because I really want, you know, the listening audience to understand personally who the candidates are so you can understand that when they get in the house, you know what to expect from them. So we're going to get right back into the questions. Yes. Lorna, yes, we're ready. Cindy. You're ready. <laughs> I am ready. And I want to go back to that yes, financial. Yes, and she's bossing me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I... In grand style. I don't have it any other way. <laughs> I, I am not. That's not my intention. So, okay. So I'm going to let you get back to financial just wanted, services. Just, uh, just for a, and then we'll go. Go just right for, ahead. Just for a moment. Uh... I wanted to say, to make it clear, that there are just so many opportunities mm -hmm. in financial services. Mm -hmm. You worked in it for 10 years. You know, we have, you know, we need accountants. We need uh, trust officers. Lawyers. I met a lawyer. Yes. I, met, I met a young man who told me he, want, he, was, he was doing uh, forensic accounting mm -hmm. in, in, in somewhere in the United States and so on. So there's... There are all these areas, and there are people who are getting into them. Yeah. But the point I really wanted to make is that for a country where 
it's more than 60% of government's revenue comes from financial services. Mm -hmm. The administration, by that I mean the government, mm -hmm. should be paying more attention, more direct and specific attention to financial services. In you don't fact, think they pay enough? I, I do think in Cayman there's a ministry, you live there. <laughs> there's a ministry of tourism, of, 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 of uh, financial services and I don't know what, whatever else, whether it's financial services and international business or mm -hmm. what. Uh, in, in, in Bermuda, they don't have a ministry, but there is a specific responsibility. Mm -hmm. I would like to see a ministry that is specifically responsible for financial services. They pay attention because they get a lot of money for it, mm -hmm. from it. But in terms of, of the same problems that you're talking about, the training, mm -hmm. the getting the people to move, the, the, the young people to move into financial services. If you had a ministry responsible for financial services, for instance, if you had a ministry responsible for financial service, you have the Ministry of Education. You have, hopefully, a kind of a needs assessment for the country done, and you know however many persons you need to work in financial services. The Ministry of Education would work closely with the ministry responsible for financial services to make sure that the kind of training, the scholarships that are given, that they go into that, into that area. That's, that's the, the point I wanted to make. Okay. But I knew, having worked in financial services, I sit on the board mm -hmm. of financial services and I've done so for the last more than three years and I would like to see just more direct administrative attention paid to financial services. Well, let me ask you what you think about this. Let's, let's talk about it from a labor perspective. I think one of the conversations happening around financial services and its management is the automatic renewal of work permits. Um, yes, within the labor code there is, um, you know, speaks to training mm -hmm. a Virgin Islander. Mm -hmm. um, however, there is a conversation that that isn't happening uh, and the heads of financial services seem to have, you know, that in with government where they get to rubber stamp their you mean the, employees every year without you going through labor the or persons. showing any, yeah. The industry, the management, people, the, the management. management. I yeah. See. Um, I so am... I think part of it is um, not just having these it gets institutions to, my, to. It gets to my very point. Right, but there, but, needs, but there needs to be a ministry that looks after these things. Not yeah, but the just... power, the, the ministry needs to be empowered. Is what yes. I'm saying. So well, I think we're no, saying the same okay. thing. Right. The ministry needs to be empowered to make sure that this that there is a, a succession plan mm -hmm. in the in the particular industry to make sure that all people move up move up the ladder and are properly trained and replace these people. That's why I'm saying we need to have more attention paid to pay to financial services. Okay, so the same way we spoke about not rocking the boat with the banks not rocking the boat with the financial services companies because people say, oh, they get away with a lot from government because government doesn't want to rock the boat. So if they say they want to bring in these however many people, they are allowed to do so. And we're going to get into the same I, thing I probably think, with tourism. I think if the government took the time to really understand mm -hmm. what is happening in financial services, they, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't have that kind of conversation that you're talking about. Okay. You take a medium-sized company, and I don't want to call any, any names. No, don't call any names. I'm not going to call any mm -hmm. names at all. But those, this, this company that I'm thinking of, and, and, and it, 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 it goes for several companies. This company hires a lot of BVI landers. Okay. A lot of BVI landers. What I like about this company is 
the particular one I'm thinking of mm -hmm. is that it's a very good corporate citizen, if you want to call it that. Okay. Mm -hmm. They give back, if you want to put it that way, very roughly. They contribute to schools, programs. They, um, I actually had an offer to maintain one of our parks okay. from this company. And it wasn't going to cost us anything to do it. Um, I hope the offer is still taken up. I mean, it's been before Christmas, mm -hmm. and there hasn't been a response. <laughs> but, but, I mean, this is the kind of thing that, this is what I mean by public-private Oh, I'm a great, like, I am the into public-private partnerships. The government can't, do, the government can't do everything. Correct. So correct. the government sets the stage. The government, uh, in the case of, let's say, you know, you look down from, look down at Road Town. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm moving around just like you're moving around a little bit. You look down from, you look down on Road Town. We spent a lot of money. We spent a lot of money, Cindy, uh, filling in this whole area uh, from, from the Pear Park down to the old pub. Uh, Sir, Francis Drake, Sir Francis Drake pub, a lot of money. What is it now? A huge car park. You can't even walk except you're walking in dirt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, a set of trailers. Uh, I don't know what's inside them, but a bunch of trailers, a bunch of trucks. You know, we need to... And, and these trailers and trucks, they, they need to be put somewhere. They need to, they're owned by people, and they need to be accommodated. But you don't spend hundreds of thousands, I don't even want to say millions, hundreds of thousands of dollars on, on, up, on this area to just have it just... It's be, prime, be just, it's, it's prime, prime land. It's prime mm -hmm. land. It's, mm -hmm. just, it's just sitting there. Mm -hmm. And I see people come off the cruise, ship, off the cruise ships, and they walk along, and that's all they see. So we go back to the point about public-private partnerships. The government sets the stage. The government decides we want to, to create a boardwalk with stores, shops, uh, restaurants, what have you. So they, 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 they design or they, they hire somebody. We have lots of architects in mm -hmm. BVI. You hire an architect and they, they do at least a schematic of it. The private sector comes along and they decide this is what we want to do, this is what we want to build. We want to build a nice restaurant. And, and our young people can become they involved the, in this yeah. too. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then you go to the bank. The bank sees that the government is serious and committed. And that's, that's how this public-private partnership will work. I think it's worked, and it's something I have to explore further, but I know it has worked to an extent in the U.S. Virgin Islands even, mm -hmm. um, along Main Street. Mm -hmm. So why can't we do the same? Why do we have to look how we're looking, you know, so down market? We have to fix our country, and that's what... If I'm elected, and I hope that people consider me to be worthy of being elected, this is what, Cindy, I want to see happen. So let me ask you a question. I think, and that's my personal opinion, and I think there are quite a few people that feel this way as well. One of the reasons I think that we can't get a lot done, that we need to get done, is that the politicians don't want to upset certain persons. So it's difficult to make a final decision on, say, the waterfront and moving that forward, or shutting down Main Street from through traffic. You Making can't get... Everybody yeah. is like, no, I don't want that, or no. So the government can't make a decision because they don't want to upset this base and that base. Do you have the willpower to, to make, make a happen? decision regardless yes. if that will cost you 
10 votes or you'd become unpopular, but down the road, you become very, people will see what it is that you were trying to do. Well, we could People say, want to, don't want to be unpopular in this moment. I understand yeah. what you're saying. You look at um, Lee Kuan Yew and what he did with Singapore and turned it into this, you know, it's a, a business mecca, if yeah. you want to call it that. Uh, so he would have been a benevolent, what you'd call him, a, not a, he wasn't a dictator, but he yeah. was not. It was no, not he, a, he had to make a decision, he had to make and a he decision. made a decision but whether let me it say, was popular or not. Let me say, though, I believe in consultation. Mm -hmm. You put that plan, the same plan, the same, same schematic I mentioned, mm -hmm. you put it out there, you get people's comments on it, you have public consultation, not for a year, Mm -hmm. Not no, for a long okay. time. So, but my, so we've my done point, that. We've you done do that, that mm -hmm. and you get the consultation. You get a sense from people that this is what we want to see. Yes, you move forward with it. Whether it means, I'm, I don't see myself as any career politician. I want to get things Fabulous. done. I am not a career politician. I, I am not about... As I said when I came out, when I told you I was going up to thing, I said it is not a popularity contest for me. Great. We need to get the country moving. We need to enforce our laws and we need to make decisions. Yes, some people will be upset. You try to accommodate them as best as you can. But if you cannot, you need to move on. You can't let the country stay <sighs> in agree. this fallow way forever. Yeah. We're <laughs> and that's how we've been for how many years? It can't go on forever. And Cindy, this is why I'm running. Mm -hmm. I'm running because I want to see, I really believe in a better BVI and we can do it. We have to have some strength. We have to have some resolve. And I am running with a team that I believe has that resolve. I love to hear it because for me, I'm looking for a working government. Yes, indeed. And that means that I am tired seeing the pictures. And yes, take a picture, great. But behind that picture, we need some real work. Mm -hmm. The BVI is in disrepair it is. all around. Oh. And I am going to the polls to elect a working government. Good for you. Yes, so we're gonna switch up a little bit. We're gonna get a little where do you come down on same-sex marriage? How do you intend to address this issue if you're elected? Uh, it's one that's, it's a hot issue, yes. Mm -hmm. it's a, this is a very Christian community, mm -hmm. a very religious community. And we really have to take into account the views in fact we have to make a decision based on the the views of the public i believe that we should seek the views of the public whether through a referendum in fact that's the easiest mm -hmm. the easiest way to to do it uh and I, I don't see any other way. Um, I have my own personal views mm -hmm. on it, but my, as a as a elected representative, as a politician, my views shouldn't matter. It's mm -hmm. what the public wants at the end of the day, and so uh, there are views on both sides at the moment. So let's let's take it to to a referendum in terms of of, of same sex marriage. Do you look at same sex marriage? as taking away the right of someone to choose? Love, happiness. Uh, Do you look at same-sex marriage on the same level as interracial relationships way back in the day? No, I, saw, I think interracial relationships are, are different. Same-sex marriage, you know, in, in a way they are, the, you know, it's like, love people love each other men might love men and so on and but I, I really don't want to get into it because <laughs> I every I, candidate I, is gonna get this question I, so if I, you're coming on the show prepare yourself prepare for it I am prepared <laughs> for it and I, I think I think my personal view 
is, is as I said, immaterial at this time. Mm -hmm. In terms of what the BVI stands for, as a, a very, very largely Christian community. Well, I don't like to use I the term Christian with what, what the you... BVI in 2023. And I know I'm going to take, you know, a lesson for a that. Hit. I'm always prepared for that. But there are what a lot of things that are really immoral about our society. So I don't really like to think about the term Christianity. I don't like to be selective about it. And I think that people are selective about it. I think wrong is wrong and immoral is immoral. Um, but the courts are going to make this decision for us. I think you may have realized that because there's a case in the court right yes, now. Yes, and so yes. the court is going to make a decision. And once the court makes the decision, um, there is no way that we can go back from it. Um, as a potential legislator, have you thought about what type of same-sex marriages? For example, in the UK, I think they have partnerships. Um, there are certain things that you're allowed to. I think the biggest part of um, same-sex marriage is being able to afford your partner the right to, you know, your belongings, your name, etc. if you die, yes, yes, like that yes, type yes, of thing. Yes, yes, yes. I, I think I it's that, deeper than, I know you know, that, two people know, having a relationship in society, accepting it. I understand it. the issues and I respect. I always have and I will continue to respect the decisions of the court. Mm -hmm. So, however they come down, we will have to respect it. Okay. Uh, because and whatever you know, this has is, to be done, with, yeah, you, this you, is you, you this find must be a country of mm -hmm. laws, mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. if we are not a country of laws, chaos reigns. We become right. a banana republic. Right. We don't want to become that. Right. So I mean, we're almost there, but we we're, oh, we're going to take a turn in a we're April taking, 24th. We hopefully will take a turn in the right direction yeah. for a change. On April 24th. On the 24th. Of I April. feel confident that we are. Yeah. I tell people that. I have a lot of hope in the next election. I, I do. I have, I have hope to see. I, I feel it. I don't know what it is, but I do. Um, OK. I'm going to take you off of that and put you right onto another uncomfortable another one. Another uncomfortable one. But I don't one. think that this one will be that uncomfortable for you, because I think that you let me hear. What is your position on a woman's right to choose? Where do you come down on abortion and effecting change on that issue? And so, OK, so you see these questions. I have started this maybe two, three months ago. Because what I realized is that the parties don't really have ideals. They kind of have plans to you know, build something, the economy. The, but we don't yeah. know what their foundation yeah, is. And, you know, women's rights and women issues and so forth, we don't really hear anything on that. And so we're in 2023. Yes, and, and I, to we, answer your question yeah. very directly, yeah. I think a woman has a right to choose. Would you be willing to her. put these, bring these legislations forward? In terms of a woman's right to choose? Yeah. Absolutely. If I want to have an abortion, would you, are you willing to put abortion legislation on the table for discussion? For discussion, indeed. For passing. But I, I do think that a woman has, should have the right, the right to choose. I, I, I would, 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 would stay there at this point. OK. <laughs> she will stay there. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of uh, No, I understand. I'm just yeah, <laughs> I, I do think that. <laughs> that's an essential point. If yes. a woman wants to, to have an abortion, she should have an abortion. Yeah. If she doesn't want to, if she wants to have a baby, she should have a baby. Yeah. It's her body. Yeah. You know, and it's her right to choose. Boom. I love straightforward answers. I don't like it running around the bush and, you know, the politically correct thing to say. Yeah. Okay. This is a big question. The last time I said that, I got in a lot of trouble, but this is a big question. You are sometimes viewed as a polarizing figure. Sometimes, sometimes. Quite often seen as more of a supporter towards our white or white expat community. Don't judge me on that term. Um, <laughs> there are persons that have shared uncomfortable stories with me in terms of how um, you, may have, they, you may have made them feel based on, you know, 
and interaction they had with you in terms of their identity, which included their demographic background. Um, there is a growing divide in the BVI. It makes me quite uncomfortable because I have a range of friends, um, as you know. Uh, do you intend to, and how do you intend to address this situation? Do you think that you can unify this territory in any way? I absolutely can, and I have proven that I can unify them in terms of education, in terms of financial services, in terms of, although you beg to differ on that, <laughs> in terms of, of, of tourism even. Uh, I, I hear you asking a number of questions in that sort of, I don't want to call it convoluted, in that statement. Uh, you call me a polarizer. I'm perceived no, I didn't to be, call you that. No, I'm perceived <laughs> to be a, yes. a polarizing figure. Can you? You mean I, I I come down on one side as opposed to another? Could you explain um, what you mean by that? Yeah, kind of unfavorable based on your how they view you in terms of. But speak. I, 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 have, I have no <laughs> in, fear. In, ter in terms of the speak questions. Cindy, it's um, not like you to be In terms of the questions. Back. Well, I want to be careful how I handle this conversation, right? Because I, too, you know, get a bit of a spanking on this conversation. I don't know what people see, but um, the overarching question from this conversation is, do you think, based on all that's going on, because there's, there's a growing boiling of division in the BVI. Do you see that you can in any way, it as a leader, unify the territory? Bring. It's an excellent, excellent question. I grew up in this community mm -hmm. with, as a, you know, I talked about my early, my mm -hmm. early years and so on. We had relatively a, a, a relative a relatively small number of expatriates in mm -hmm. the in the BVA. They were very integrated with mm -hmm. us. Um, we, you know, as we have developed, we attract persons from all over the world. Yeah, we attract. In fact, the last census, I think. Uh, identified over a hundred nations mm -hmm. uh, in the British Virgin Islands, which is, is a lot of people, a lot mm -hmm. of countries represented. I am friends with people from many nations in the Caribbean, the UK, US, uh, Europe. Europe, everywhere. So I have friends who are from everywhere. I am not, I, 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 I don't come down on one side as opposed to, to the other. But I do sense that there is a kind of a, and I, I, I think it needs to be nipped in the bud. Mm -hmm. We're here to do that. A division mm -hmm. uh, growing. Uh, I don't know whether it's just one or two bad apples or whether it's, I don't know what is the basis of it, but we need mm -hmm. to nip it in the bud, whatever I it agree. is. Because as a country, we need to get along. This country, we, we have to, to get along. Everybody contributes in, 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 in the BVI. Um, I see us as a kind of a, a pop, pop, pot, pop, pop, melting, potpourri, melting pot, yeah. a melting pot, a yeah. potpourri mm -hmm. of, 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 of nations. And everybody is contributing to the um, to what is the BVI and its many strengths. And we all need to, to get along. And to answer your question directly, I do see myself as capable because I speak to everybody. Mm -hmm. In terms of going back to the PPP I was talking about, I see myself as being able to talk to the persons in the private sector mm -hmm. so that I can bring them to the table to govern, to work with government in the many areas. And I have friends from every, every spectrum, every walk of life. And so I see myself as being able to bring together the BVI to, you know, in Jamaica, I think it's Jamaica talks about 
out of many nations, one people mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. I want to see us there uh, where we see each other as helping each other and, and working together for that better BVI that I know that we will see and I know that you are hoping for and with the vote and the support of the, of the people of the BVI, I hope to contribute to that better BVI. One of, one of the things that, because I support your run. I support your run. Thanks for telling me. <laughs> Anybody out there can tell you that. Well, they, are, they, they say, you know, yeah, we know Lana is your girl. And I'm like, <laughs> OK. But one of the things that I get is that you don't relate to the common man. And I don't think that, because you've spoken about where you've come from, but do you think that people kind of use the word aloof for, you know, you're out of the common man's reach? What is your response to that? I don't, I don't understand why they come to that, that conclusion. I mean, so you've heard it before? I've heard okay, it, okay. yeah. I think it's completely wrong. That's why I went to great lengths to explain where I've come, mm -hmm. where, where I came from, mm -hmm. and where I am at the moment. It's, it's, I'm very happy for the education that I have received. Of course, you shouldn't apologize for I your have, success. I have a great relationship with people. I love people. I love working with people. I mean, even in financial services that I work in now, this is, you are elected to the board. And, and every time I get elected to the board, because people know me, they like me. They, they, and and I, I love people. I, I've talked about my community service. Mm -hmm. uh, I've talked about, you know, my professional service. Um, but I think it's a, it's a great misunderstanding. And, and programs such as yours, this, this interview that you, you're having with me, I hope that that would help people to understand better. And I'm glad that you, you dug deep. Or you <laughs> I, cut I deep. I dug deep. You cut, you cut, sorry, you cut, <laughs> you cut deep. Cut deep. Because I do want people to understand mm -hmm. who I am and to lose the perception that I am aloof. I'm aloof. Nobody has more fun than I do. That's true. Every time. You bring the, the party. Time. Exactly. So how could they say I'm aloof? I'm anything but aloof. Okay. But I do want us to, as a country to, to get together. There'll be the fun times. Mm -hmm. Of course. And of course. there'll be the serious times. Mm -hmm. But we need to come together as a Can country. Can I tell you, and, and again, I mean, no matter why I say I'm going to upset somebody, but I'm going to really say that I really miss your premier parties. <laughs> like, uh, yes, so... yes, I miss them too. Uh, I think we I all miss, do. I miss them too, Cindy. They, you know, yes, I miss, I miss them too. They were a brighter they were day is around parties. the corner. It's around the corner. Okay, I'm gonna switch up a, a bit again. How do you balance foreign investment while protecting me, the locals? Uh, I think the BBI think can do well with that's what great we can do. investment. Yes. We how can do, do we balance it? We can do with both. Both have their place, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, I do think that we need to have, an, if you want to call it, an investment plan. I don't like, I'm tired of using the word plan. Mm -hmm. But we must have a, an investment policy. Mm -hmm. That's a better phrase. So that... BVI landers know that these are areas. BVI landers, of course, could invest in any area that they want to. Of course. But there are these areas that BVI landers will be given specific, or I don't want to use the word specific, sorry. They'll be given encouragement to, you know, to, to get Monopolize. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there, there is an opportunity for, for both. And we, we, we have to support BVI landers in growing their businesses. We go back to the banks and so on. We go back to the banks and those, those, those issues that, 
that we face in not getting easy financing, if you mm -hmm. want to call it that. So uh, again, it calls for more government engagement, but there has to be policies put in place for for investment. Uh, that has never been been very clear. So you mm -hmm. find you find people doing things sadly like uh, fronting. Yeah, it's the worst thing you could do because it it stunts your growth. You get a few dollars from it, but it's 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 not a healthy thing to do. But I think, and there are also opportunities for foreign and local investment. You know what I'm saying? Of course. Um, BVI lenders might decide to join forces with a foreign investor. Very, very desirable. And you know, you pass on the training, you pass on the knowledge and so on. So it's, 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 it's very desirable. But I do take your point that BVI lenders must be given the best possible opportunity yeah. to invest in whatever areas they, they want to invest in. And what is needed is a clear policy. It's not, it's, it's not happened. And I, I, I am not, I'm not picking out any particular government mm -hmm. to blame mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. this. It's, it's just not happened and we need to have it. I'm glad that there is a, <clears throat> I think the, the current administration there is a, what do they call it? A trade commission mm -hmm. uh, that is, has been established. Uh, I'm not sure how well it works. Uh, I have not delved into it to, to, to see if these, are, these policies are, are contained in, 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 in the, the workings of the commission. But certainly that those policies must be there, they must be clear so that people on both sides know how to proceed. Okay. I, I mean, I think the BVI has created quite a bit of millionaires. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think they give back enough? Do you think they're involved enough in quietly, reinvesting quiet, in the territory? Quietly, quietly, quietly. In terms of giving back. There are some I, don't, people... I don't mean like socially, but in terms of reinvesting, say, into... Um, young businesses or young entrepreneurs? Do you see that? I've they, spoken no, before no, about I, our, um, I, angel I, I think I think they can, they can do, a, they can they do can more. more. I they feel can the same. definitely do more. I feel the same. But uh, in terms of, I thought you meant in terms of giving back, I thought no, you meant- not socially. Giving socially. Yeah, because reinvesting I was going to into. Say, some people don't like to talk about what they do. Of course, yeah. yeah and so they yeah. do it very quietly. Yeah. But in terms of, of helping, mentoring, uh, giving the kind of angel support, angel mm -hmm. investment support mm -hmm. and so on, they can do more. Yeah. But you know, Cindy, it's, it's probably an education process because they can more than afford to. Yeah, education, so, but empowerment, if we, understanding exactly what real empowerment and what nation building real, is. And nation, mm -hmm. that's it. Mm -hmm. That's what is needed. Mm -hmm. And I think this is where the change and a new administration coming in can can do. I like to Get call it a new mindset. A new mindset. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like that too. Mm -hmm. This is where they can work to encourage our our people who've really made it big and yeah. done well yeah. to really, you know, reinvest. Reinvest and get more people involved in the in the development of our country. Absolutely. You want to talk about our scooter riders? We're just about coming to the end. Look where you're going now. <laughs> <laughs> you know we have to talk about we have to talk about the scooter look, rider. Oh, look where you're going. Okay, so let's touch it up real quick. We know that you've remained vocal on issues. I can say that like you didn't go into the night. No. When you were no longer the first lady. No. Um, you stayed vocal. You say what you have to say on your page, yeah. and you keep it pushing. Like me, whoever is upset, they'll be okay tomorrow morning. Um, one thing that stands out for a lot of us is your position on scooter noise in the territory. Before I get to the question, it did boggle my mind, and I think other people, um, that your husband's administration didn't really do as much as they could do to curb the situation. Um, I think we could say, we could throw it back on the police, um, but 
I've done a little bit of research and speaking to, you know, some persons, the young, the old, some up in the mix, they've said that, you know, the NDP administration were happy to turn a blind eye to maintain the young vote because the NDP has carried the young vote for a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we're saying that that could have been one of the issues, do you think, where do you come down on? I don't think you hate the scooters. Absolutely I think it's not. the noise it's the that's noise. the problem. And so maybe what do you think we can do to curb the issue um, while maintaining our love and appreciation for, for our young, young people? people. Um, my son is a scooter rider and I'm always nervous about him, but I, he, his bike has is to it be one insured. Of those loud ones? His no, oh, no, no, no. I don't. My children know I will stop you in public, and it'll be a whole embarrassing <laughs> shalang. So they're not gonna try me. So his bike has to be insured. It has to be licensed. He has a permit. He'll get his license when school is out, and he can go. He has to wear his helmet. But I still get scared because I think there isn't the respect on both sides. The scooter riders can get very irritating, and then you have the. Um, motorists who just their patience is really thin as well how, how how do we start to and we've talked about this so many times but how do we start to fix the situation with how much scooter time, safety how much time we, the how much time noise on this note, uh, <laughs> I give you because, like 30 seconds okay <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> no you're absolutely right mm -hmm. it's not about the, the, the scooter riders or the bike riders of course I think the ones who do the proper wheelies mm -hmm. and from Bogus Bay down to Sikos Bay and so on. Super skilled. They are really, they're super skilled, but they're endangering themselves yes. as yes. well. Yes, and others. And others. Mm -hmm. So I'm not talking about those, and incidentally, those are the noisy ones. Right. I just happen to see them passing. <laughs> but I have absolutely, you're right, I have absolutely no objection to people riding bikes I'm not now talking about those who are riding them for transport, because mm -hmm. a lot of people increasingly find it yeah. easier to do it for transport. I'm thinking of those who are doing it for, for fun. And I ask, ask you in jest how long we have to have, how long we have, because this is a countrywide, uh, I've heard them on Virgin Border. Of course, of course. I haven't heard them on Anagada, but I've certainly heard them on Virgin Gorda, so a Virgin Gorda Tortola thing. You have people who are elderly. You have people, you have babies. You have uh, people with sleep ailments and so on. Mm -hmm. You have people who are working. Mm -hmm. Many days I have to put plugs yes. in my ears to concentrate, uh, to, to, to be able to work. Um, and I don't live on the street, mm -hmm. you know, but I mean, my, my, my point is I, I live away from the street. Yeah. That's what I mean. You mean not close so to the road. So I don't live mm -hmm. that close to the road is, mm -hmm. is, is what I meant to say. But the noise travels. The noise. Mm -hmm. It's sometimes, I mean, it's, it's, it's sometimes, it's, I don't know. It can, as I say, it can wake the dead. Yeah. The kind of noise. I don't know what it is they do in terms of, of, of um, removing the, 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 what you call it? They cut the muffler, apparently. They, they not only cut the muffler, it looks as though they have some special noise maker. And they, add a and they go <laughs> noisier every and time. Yeah. But I do think it needs to stop. I spoke to a young person about it today because I wanted his take on it. Mm -hmm. And I told him I didn't buy his explanation. Mm -hmm. Was he it said that to alert? He, the, he to, they yes. told you that too. Well, I did a show. He's, I did a, one of really? the cutting shows. Yes, yes. He I did a show. He said to me, yeah. He said to me, and he was adamant, mm -hmm. a young, mm -hmm. bright, really bright, I think initially person. it started out there. That's what he said to but me. But I think it's just like, he said it's kind of like having 10 said, Gucci chains. I, I oh, your bike is the loudest. I think that's yeah, where that's it has gotten it to now. Yeah. So, so um, he said that that's what it is. It's uh, to alert the driver so they don't get run over or whatever it is. I don't buy it. And I told him point blank, <laughs> you know, you keep your opinion, I keep mine. I don't buy it. The one good point he made, and I agree with it, is that we need to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. You had a conversation 
on cut deep we as a group older people who are impacted need to meet with these young people to find these bike riders the, the loud bikes to find a solution this thing about a, a drag what you call it a drag racing center or whatever it is i don't he brought that up too i don't think that's a solution they like to ride we ride down there <laughs> At what right down in the street mm -hmm. at one and two in the morning they love to ride up and down yeah. and I am not hiding the fact that I call the police yeah because <laughs> you know it is so loud mm -hmm. but I I would love to see our, our young people continue to enjoy themselves but not at the expense of mm -hmm. other people mm -hmm. it's not right mm -hmm. Having a noise nuisance is not right, and it, it really needs to stop, and it's a matter of enforcement. Yeah. But there's also the matter of uh, respect. Yes. I think that's probably lacking through all tiers of our society. Society, so, yeah. yeah. It goes back to the point can, you made, made earlier about the, 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 the fabric tearing at the mm -hmm. seams and, mm -hmm. and so on. But it's not gone too far that we can't mm -hmm. get it back. Mm -hmm. I, as I said, I want our young people to enjoy themselves. We need to talk about how that can happen without really disturbing the rest. Even our, our visitors. Yeah. You know, yeah. people staying at, at Maria's, people staying at Sugar Mill, people staying wherever. It's not fair to them. You know, they come to the BVI because they know it's, yeah. it's peaceful, it's quiet and so mm -hmm. on. And then you have this burst of noise 24-7 mm -hmm. virtually. Yeah. So it, it, but it needs to stop. And I think it, there's, there's a solution to it. Yeah. And it, 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 it comes through having that dialogue with our yeah. young people. Yeah, I agree. Our next three or four questions are probably going to merge into each other. And then we're going to dive into tourism quick and we're going to close down. So let's chat about education. We touched on it a little bit, but yes. let's just kind of get a little bit more into it. You were instrumental in the development of HLSCC some 33 years ago. Yes. Um, to date, we're unable to point, um, to, to get to the point of a bachelor's degree. We're still at associate's degrees, right? 33 years later. Uh, where do you see, or how do you see that we can go from associates after 33 years and we can evolve to maybe bachelor's or, you know, further tertiary terms of university? Um, here in the BVI, and then we can talk about secondary education. Um, we can even talk special about ed. special ed. We can right. talk about so if we if so we, we can talk all. Uh, let's talk I about want all to of say, that. let me start, uh, and 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 I'm, I'm I'm mindful that we we we're running out of time, but let's start at the top at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Let's start with our, our, our kids. You, you started at the top, mm -hmm. but let's start at the bottom with our kids from for one to five years old, mm -hmm. um, those formative years, mm -hmm. um, you have your, your kids, I have mine. Mm -hmm. So we know that those are the most important years of a, of, of a child's life. And um, it's easy for us to drop them off and we commend the, the proprietors of nurseries and, and so on, uh, schools even, for mm -hmm. the, the hard work they do. But an administration, and I'm talking about solutions, mm -hmm. if I were to be a part of an administration, I would ensure that there is a closer relationship between the Ministry of Education, the Department of Education, and those kids so that there is certification. And we are sure that the kids are learning even at that one to five, five years that they're learning right, and then they come up to, to young people. And then they, they get into, into um, college, the HLSCC. I think in terms of the HLSCC, uh, what we ought to be looking at is the quality of those associate's degrees and mm -hmm. making sure. I think in the person of the, the current president, we have a, an excellent person mm -hmm. in terms of I think we have gotten the requisite accreditation uh, that we we need we have good um, teachers and, and so on so and, and I think we have a good association 
with um, universities abroad. And I, for one, think, Cindy, yes, it's good for us to probably have a, a bachelor's degree, or offer a bachelor's degree such as the University of the Virgin Islands does and so on mm -hmm. after. In fact, I think they probably started out doing that. But I believe in, in, and you know where I'm going with it, I believe in us getting a, an education that takes us beyond the BVI. Mm -hmm. I, I, I certainly have been great, grateful for the fact that I've been educated in several countries. And it, it's, it's broadened my perspective. So I think what the college is doing and what they, they, they continue to do, they're doing a, a, an excellent job in terms of the associates program. What they're also doing is, for example, in the marine sector, they, they are expanding that area so that they can provide training to not just people in the BVI, but people across the, the Caribbean. That's, that's, that's one area, and that's one very important area. They're developing within the BVI itself. We are offering, I shouldn't say we because I'm no longer on the board, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I know you can, you can get your captainship, your captain's license, you can get various licenses. Mm -hmm. And this is one area where I see a good PPP working because, for instance, I know that Nanny Key, for example, works closely with the college in terms of the marine sector in, in, mm -hmm. in training people in getting um, captain's licenses. Um, in the culinary area, equally, uh, they're working in those areas. So the college is, is providing a variety of services. I think at one point, I don't know whether it's still ongoing, but in terms of renewable energy, they were looking at, at those areas, all important areas. Mm -hmm. We should be looking at a community college in the widest sense of providing, the, providing for the needs of the community. Mm -hmm. One of the things that young people talked about, Cindy, was the need for for them to be able to do more. I found that interesting, young people. They wanted to see more certification in the trades. Right. They don't just want to go and work in a trust company with a necktie and whatever else and mm -hmm. be an accountant or what have you. They want to be able to, to be a, a, a certified mm -hmm. joiner Mm -hmm. uh, plumber, whatever mm -hmm. it is. So people, people are, 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 are sort of broadening their horizons. Yeah. And I do think the college, the college should be, should be commended um, in terms of, of what they're doing. And yes, it's 33 years. Uh, but they've, they've not just gone in terms of the associate's degree. They've, they've gone far wider. They used to do uh, a teacher's education certification as well. I don't know whether that's still that still is in effect. But um, they've done that. They had nursing and so on. These are the areas that I think that they should be concentrating on okay. in terms of education. Okay. And so, I will, of course, work with the, the directorate, the administration of the college to make sure that these things really come together. All right. Um, so I'm going to wrap up on this question because I think this is going to you want to talk about tourism. I think we have about nine, nine minutes left. So let's talk about tourism. And what are your plans to curb the drain we're experiencing? You know which drain I'm speaking about? No, yet. The yeah, tourists yeah. that have left our shores based on the decisions that we've made over the past couple okay. of years. Um, how do we take a product to the next level and diversify that product? Okay, so let's take it one at a time. The drain. Mm -hmm. In the 80s, <coughs> sorry, in the 1980s, excuse me, let me drink a little water. In the 1980s, <coughs> late 80s, we worked very hard um, to, to establish a yachtsmen friend, friendly policy mm -hmm. where uh, we were trying to attract 
boats and especially C R E W E D crude boats. I don't mean crude, I mean boats with you know people working on them. And there were a lot of them in the USVI. So <clears throat> we worked very hard to get those crude boats to come over to BVI. And we established, I, I'm not going to spend any time on it, but we succeeded right. in mm -hmm. getting them to come over. Mm -hmm. And I mean, business was, was booming at, at Nanny Key and, and, and several, even the moorings had yeah. some crude boats. Yeah. And so I was, I was very disappointed uh, when, uh, when we kind of threw the, doors, threw the doors open and everybody could come and go. Uh, so we, we no longer, I don't, I don't want to talk about protecting our waters, but we're no longer trying to maintain our advantage. Right. Because the, the waters are here mm -hmm. in, 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 in the British Virgin Islands. And then, of course, we lost a lot of the boats uh, from the charter companies with the whole COVID thing and our bad the management mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. it. The boats just went to the USVI. And um, we hope they'll come back because, yes, as I said, we have the, the better sailing waters. So we've, we've, we've lost people. We've lost people even in terms of how we, we treat them, we behave towards mm -hmm. them. And this is another area of, of, of significant, significant interest, a great priority for me training our people in customer service yeah. in terms of how to treat people. We used to have a training department. I don't know why it was closed down. But I don't want to just see us open a training department to say we're opening a training department. I want to be effective. I want it to be effective. And I want us to find the best possible people. And there are lots of BV Islanders. They may not be here right now. But they'd be happy to come home yeah. and work with us to develop our training department so that we have an excellent department that can deliver training to our people, our public servants. They want to be trained. We used to do, when I was a permanent secretary, we used to send our immigration uh, labor people, in particular customs officers, we would send them all over, over the Caribbean on attachments. You know, people need to see how other people do it. Yeah. We would bring people here. Yeah. We need to do those things to get our people up to, you know, so we Stand could be up. a world-class uh, public service and stop the drain, as you, the drain, as you call it. And, of course, people don't come here because of what we were talking about before, the, the ugliness of the country, yeah. how it looks. It's from, and especially Virgin Gorda isn't nearly as bad as, as Tortola. Uh, we need to get it fixed, mm -hmm. and we need to, once we fixed it, we need to start inviting people. Yes, we are still one of the, the top 10 jurisdictions, destinations um, in tourism, uh, but this would be, you know, the Virgin Gorders, the Guana Islands, yeah. and so on. Tortola, we need to, to fix it. We also need to have a, a, dis, a, 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 a hotel, I don't want to say because we have Maria's, which is a fine hotel, and we have but we need other more. hotels. We mm -hmm. need more hotels yeah. on Tortola. Yeah. We need more business, business, centers. business people, business mm -hmm. centers, and mm -hmm. so on. Mm -hmm. We can't even hold a, we can't even hold a conference here. You know, um, you're talking about a con for a conference to be viable. You know, from your own experience, it it we have to have a conference facility that can accommodate 200 people, that's 250 people as mm -hmm. a as a minimum. That's a small conference. Mm -hmm. I'm not even talking big conferences. So we need to have conference facilities. We need to have a conference hotel that can accommodate those people comfortably, 200, 300 people, and an equal number of rooms. Uh, so those are things. And we have the, the, place, the places to accommodate them. We just have to commit to doing it and getting those people getting the drain to come in the opposite direction, yeah. getting our people back, our overnighters, our boat people, by treating them right.
I agree with you. So, in terms of our tourism product, our infrastructure is really the big. It is. It is. Hold up, right As now. As I said, and I said it somewhere else. I said, you know, up a derelict-looking, untidy country. It doesn't send a good message. It doesn't make us feel good about ourselves. Yeah. And the tourists come and they, they're like, I ain't coming back here. Yeah. You know, and we, we, we can't continue to have that. Yeah. There's a conversation, and we just, we're going to close, but there's a conversation that is um, developing the blue economy. Right. Right. Um, this morning, a young lady from Virgin Gorda, she shared a picture on um, social media on Facebook. It was a beautiful picture, and she was like, oh, it's a beautiful day. But then she said, what is the um, shiny thing on top of the water? There was a glass on top of the water. And it probably was maybe six weeks before that, someone else had met me, and they sent me some pictures, you know, beautiful pictures, but there was this, and I knew what it was. So I asked her what area she was in. Uh, the blue economy is our waters and what it we can get and, and what, what we can get out of that, exactly, right? Yeah. That's sewage. Oh no. In the water. So oh, I didn't see it, that it, it prompted me and I wanted to, and I think I'm gonna ask it to every candidate. How do we develop our blue economy um, if we're destroying it? with sewage, because at this rate, we shouldn't even eat what's in the water. I agree And that's with a you. big part of the blue economy. I agree with you. And it's, it's very sad that you, you observed that. I didn't see that. I didn't see that picture. But certainly, you know, we talked a lot and we spent a lot of time talking about infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, 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 I didn't really delve into to the areas that, mm -hmm. the specific areas, but certainly we have to do something about our sewage mm -hmm. immediately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to do something about our mm -hmm. sewage. And mm -hmm. Because it was seven o'clock this morning and she shared that and that was the first, you because see? everybody's talking about the blue economy and I'm like, okay, well, a big part of the blue economy, if we understand what it is, is what is under the yeah, sea, yeah, so I don't yeah. know. Yeah, we have to, we have to clean up our, our seas, we have to clean up our beaches. Okay. But in terms of the sewage treatment, that is a big area of the, the infrastructure program that, it's, uh, that forms part of, 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 of my platform, certainly. Uh, in terms of the blue economy, we also have to, to look at, and, and this is not a, a, a sexy subject, mm -hmm. we have to look at replanting our mangroves. Mm -hmm. That's the only way we're going to get our fish and marine life back. Mm -hmm. We have to replant our mangroves. Rotary is doing some things, but we need a lot more help from yeah. the general community. We have, to, um, <clears throat> we have to make sure that our plastics are not out there choking off our fish and so on. Do you recycle? Um, I don't recycle, <laughs> but I, I do save. I do stuff with my... I do make sure that my plastics are sent so you do right recycle. Place. So I yes. do, but I, I, I thought you meant do I do no, personally in my home. And, oh, no, Oh, yes, I do, is. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's, that's, that's very important. Perfect. Um, <clears throat> in terms of, of, of the, the, that, that blue economy, another thing that the same young man I was speaking to, and mm -hmm. he's very intelligent, one of the things he said is the blue economy can make, a lot, make us a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But he said, for instance, you know, we have like a two-month period for uh, a closed season. For on certain species. On certain species. Mm -hmm. His view is that it's not long enough for the species to really grow and, and re regenerate. Mm -hmm. And he thinks instead, and it's worth looking at, and it's something that I would look at certainly, mm -hmm. he thinks that what we should be looking at is particular areas in our, um, what's it, 200 mile limit or whatever okay, it is. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. And really you is. close off that area for, you know, maybe six months, a year, whatever it is, so that the regeneration happens, the redevelopment happens. And then you, you keep doing that until we can get our, <clears throat> our sea life back 
to okay. where it where it where it should be, mm -hmm. and um, it certainly is is worth think, thinking about. And you see, our, our blue economy, we don't have any, you know, we don't have any nat known natural resources, so we have to rely on our waters. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to make sure that they are not as polluted, and it is sad that they are as, as obviously polluted as the picture you just described to me. But certainly getting our sewage fixed has to be an, a huge and immediate priority, priority for the new government. Yes, and no more conversation no about more. it. It, needs, it. It cannot take 40 years exactly. to and build it cannot or be a, fix. And it cannot be a patch and go thing no, either, no, no. where no. you fix it one day yeah. and another side of it bursts open and so yeah. on. It has to be properly fixed and professionally done. Lona, thank you for this interview. I think it was great. Um, I want to encourage you as you continue on your path to the House of Assembly. Uh, I personally think you're going to be successful. I have, thank you. I have thank my you. 13 persons that I will share <laughs> with the public that I think will be successful. Um, you have your 13? And, you're going to... Yeah, yeah. I, okay, I have you've 13 that I think will make it, um, and I have my idea of what should probably sit in the next House of Assembly that can create some changes for us, and I'll get there, I'll get there. But Cindy, um, in my case, <laughs> in my case, I have to say, from your lips to God's ears, as we say, and I also have to say that, again, as I've been saying, I do hope I, I have this passion for the country. I, I, I do believe and I'm committed to a better BVI. And I do hope that the people of the BVI see me as somebody who can help to make the BVI a better place by voting for me. I have established myself, uh, Cindy, as not just a talker. I don't just talk. I know you can do that. I do. You're a worker. I, I am a worker, exactly. And I I and I'm not only going to talk I'm I'm not going to talk about any airy fairy things that mm -hmm. I know I can't mm -hmm. can't accomplish. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about things, I'm talking about consultation with the public, of course. That's very essential. But once that is finished, when necessary, I am talking about really moving to implementing because we've got to turn this country around. Absolutely. Thank you. And on that note, we're going to close. Um, I wish you well on your path to the House of Assembly. Uh, tomorrow night, we're going to have Chad George, uh, second, first district um, candidate. He's running independent. He will be our interview tomorrow night. That will be from 8 to 10. Thank you for tuning in to Cut Deep. Stay with us on the path to decision 2023, straight up to the House of Assembly and a new sitting government on the 25th of April. Thank you and good night. A clean BBI with a solid infrastructure must be our legacy to our young people. As Sonia said earlier, our youth are not only our next, they are our now generation. Yes, we cannot, so we cannot fail them. Education is critical to their development, including mentorship and career guidance. They need access to finance to meet their entrepreneurial ambitions. Most importantly, we must empower them to become the men and women who will take this country forward.